Hello. My name is Mark Barden. Just four months ago, my wife Jackie and I lost our son. And our children, James and Natalie, they lost their little brother, Daniel. Daniel was a first grader at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Our sweet seven-year-old Daniel was one of 20 children, six adults lost on December 14th. And I have to say, it feels like it was just yesterday. In our deepest grief, we were supported by the love of our families and comforted by the love and prayers we received from millions of America from every corner of the country. What happened in Newtown can happen anywhere. In any instant, any dad in America could be in my shoes. No one should feel the pain. No one should feel our pain or the pain felt by the tens of thousands of people who've lost loved ones to senseless gun violence. And that's why we're here. Two weeks ago, 12 of us from Newtown came to meet with U.S. Senators and have a conversation about how to bring common sense solutions to the issues of gun violence. We came with a sense of hope, optimistic that real conversation could begin that would ultimately save the lives of so many Americans. We met with dozens of Democrats and Republicans and shared with them pictures of our children, our spouses, our parents who lost their lives on December 14th. Expanded background checks wouldn't have saved our loved ones, but still we came to support a bipartisan proposal from two senators, both with A ratings from the NRA. A common sense proposal supported by 90% of Americans. It's a proposal that will save lives without interfering with the rights of responsible, law-abiding gun owners. We'll return home now, disappointed but not defeated. We return home with a determination that change will happen. Maybe not today, but it will happen. It will happen soon. We've always known this would be a long road and we don't have the luxury of turning back. We will keep moving forward and build public support for common sense solutions in the areas of mental health, school safety, and gun safety. We take strength from the children and loved ones that we lost and we carry a great faith in the American people. On behalf of the Sandy Hook Promise, I would like to thank President Obama, Vice President Biden, for their leadership and for standing strong and continuing to fight for a safer America. I would like to thank Senators Toomey, Manchin, Schumer, and Kirk for coming together to seek common ground on legislation that would keep guns out of the hands of criminals and save lives. I would like to thank Connecticut's Senators Blumenthal and Murphy. They've been right with us. They stood by us right from the very beginning. From the first few hours after this tragedy, they were with us. We will not be defeated. We are not defeated and we will not be defeated. We are here now. We will always be here because we have no other choice. We are not going away. And every day, as more people are killed in this country because of gun violence, our determination grows stronger. We leave Washington hoping that others, both here and across the country, will join us in making the Sandy Hook promise, a pledge that we had great hope that more U.S. Senators would take literally. I'd like to end by repeating the words with which the Sandy Hook promise begins. Our hearts are broken. Our spirit is not. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama. Good job. A few months ago, in response to too many tragedies, including the shootings of a United States Congresswoman, Gabby Gifford, who's here today, and the murder of 20 
innocent school children and their teachers. This country took up the cause of protecting more of our people from gun violence. Families that know unspeakable grief summon the courage to petition their elected leaders. Not just to honor the memory of their children, but to protect the lives of all of our children. A few minutes ago, a minority in the United States Senate decided it wasn't worth it. They blocked common sense gun reforms, even while these families looked on from the Senate gallery. By now, it's well known that 90 percent of the American people support universal background checks that make it harder for a dangerous person to buy a gun. We're talking about convicted felons, people convicted of domestic violence, people with a severe mental illness. Ninety percent of Americans support that idea. Most Americans think that's already the law. And a few minutes ago, 90 percent of Democrats in the Senate voted for that idea. But it's not going to happen, because 90 percent of Republicans in the Senate just voted against that idea. A majority of Senators voted yes to protecting more of our citizens with smarter background checks. But by this continuing distortion of Senate rules, a minority was able to block it from moving forward. Now, I'm going to speak plainly and honestly about what's happened here, because the American people are trying to figure out how can something have 90 percent support and yet not happen. We had a Democrat and a Republican, both gun owners, both fierce defenders of our Second Amendment, with A grades from the NRA, come together and work together to write a common sense compromise on background checks. And I want to thank Joe Manchin and Pat Toomey for their courage in doing that. That was not easy, given their traditional strong support for Second Amendment rights. As they said, nobody could honestly claim that the package they put together infringed on our Second Amendment rights. All it did was extend the same background check rules that already apply to guns purchased from a dealer to guns purchased at gun shows or over the Internet. So 60 percent of guns are already purchased through a background check system. This would have covered a lot of the guns that are currently outside that system. Their legislation showed respect for gun owners, and it showed respect for the victims of gun violence. And Gabby Giffords, by the way, is both. She's a gun owner and a victim of gun violence. She is a Westerner and a moderate, and she supports these background checks. In fact, even the NRA used to support expanded background checks. The current leader of the NRA used to support these background checks. So while this compromise didn't contain everything I wanted or everything that these families wanted, it did represent progress. It represented moderation and common sense. That's why 90 percent of the American people supported it. But instead of supporting this compromise, the gun lobby and its allies willfully lied about the bill. They claimed that it would create some sort of Big Brother gun registry, even though the bill did the opposite. This legislation, in fact, outlawed any registry, plain and simple, right there in the text. But that didn't matter. And unfortunately, this pattern of spreading untruths about this legislation served a purpose because those lies upset an intense minority of gun owners. And that, in turn, intimidated a lot of Senators. And I talked to several of these Senators over the past few weeks, and they're all good people. I know all of them were shocked by tragedies like Newtown. 
And I also understand that they come from states that are strongly pro-gun. And I've consistently said that there are regional differences when it comes to guns. And that both sides have to listen to each other. But the fact is, most of these senators could not offer any good reason why we wouldn't want to make it harder for criminals and those with severe mental illnesses to buy a gun. There were no coherent arguments as to why we wouldn't do this. It came down to politics. The worry that that vocal minority of gun owners would come after them in future elections. They worried that the gun lobby would spend a lot of money and paint them as anti-Second Amendment. And obviously, a lot of Republicans had that fear, but Democrats had that fear, too. And so they caved to the pressure. And they started looking for an excuse, any excuse, to vote no. One common argument I heard was that this legislation wouldn't prevent all future ma massacres. And that's true. As I said from the start, no single piece of legislation can stop every act of violence and evil. We learned that tragically just two days ago. But if action by Congress could have saved one person, one child, a few hundred, a few thousand, if it could have prevented those people from losing their lives to gun violence in the future while preserving our Second Amendment rights, we had an obligation to try. And this legislation met that test. And too many senators failed theirs. I've heard some say that blocking this step would be a victory. And my question is, a, a victory for who? A victory for what? All that happened today was the preservation of the loophole that lets dangerous criminals buy guns without a background check. That didn't make our kids safer. <laughs> victory for not doing something that 90 percent of Americans, 80 percent of Republicans, the vast majority of your constituents wanted to get done? It begs the question, who, who are we here to represent? I've heard folks say that having the families of victims lobby for this legislation was somehow misplaced. A prop, somebody called them. Emotional blackmail, some outlet said. Are they serious? Do we really think that thousands of families whose lives have been shattered by gun violence don't have a right to weigh in on this issue? Do we think their, their emotions, their loss, is not relevant to this debate? So all in all, this was a pretty shameful day for Washington. But this effort is not over. I want to make it clear to the American people. We can still bring about meaningful changes that reduce gun violence, so long as the American people don't give up on it. Even without Congress, my administration will keep doing everything it can to protect more of our communities. We're going to address the barriers that prevent states from participating in the existing background check system. We're going to give law enforcement more information about lost and stolen guns so it can do its job. We're going to help to put in place emergency plans to protect our children in their schools. But we can do more if Congress gets its act together. And if this Congress refuses to listen to the American people and pass common sense gun legislation, then the real impact is going to have to come from the voters. To all the people who supported this legislation, law enforcement and responsible gun owners, Democrats and Republicans, urban moms, rural hunters, whoever you are, you need to let your representatives in Congress know that you are disappointed and that if they don't act this time, you will remember come election time. 
to the wide majority of NRA households who supported this legislation. You need to let your leadership and lobbyists in Washington know they didn't represent your views on this one. The point is those who care deeply about preventing more and more gun violence will have to be as passionate and as organized and as vocal as those who blocked these common sense steps to help keep our kids safe. Ultimately, you outnumber those who argued the other way. But they're better organized, they're better financed, they've been at it longer, and they make sure to stay focused on this one issue during election time. And that's the reason why you can have something that 90 percent of Americans support and you can't get it through the Senate or the House of Representatives. So to change Washington, you, the American people, are going to have to sustain some passion about this. And when necessary, you've got to send the right people to Washington. And that requires strength. And it requires persistence. And that's the one thing that these families should have inspired in all of us. I still don't know how they have been able to muster up the strength to, to do what they've been doing over the last several weeks, last several months. And I see this as just round one. You know, when Newtown happened, I met with these families and I spoke to the community and I said, something must be different right now. We're going to have to change. And that's what the whole country said. Everybody talked about how we were going to change something to make sure this didn't happen again. Just like everybody talked about how we needed to do something after Aurora. Everybody talked about we need to change something after Tucson. And I'm assuming that the emotions that we've all felt since Newtown, the emotions that we've all felt since Tucson and Aurora and Chicago, the pain we share with these families and families all across the country who've lost a loved one to gun violence, I'm assuming that's not a temporary thing. I'm assuming our expressions of grief and our commitment to do something different to prevent these things from happening are not empty words. I believe we're going to be able to get this done. Sooner or later, we are going to get this right. The memories of these children demand it, and so do the American people. Thank you very much, everybody.